Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. On today, we have Greg, our old friend and good friend, Pete Gray. That's right. Longtime Nailed member, somebody we've always looked up to, had a great discussion with him. You know, it's funny having Pete at the conventions over the years. He's one of those guys that, you know, he'd, 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 he'd make some point during a round table and he wouldn't need something you never thought of or whatever. He kind of took him for granted till I didn't get to see him this year at the convention. And I thought, damn, I missed Pete Gray. I missed him. Yeah. Have to record with him online. <laughs> 150 years of his, of his uh, company, CN Robinson Supply. Wow. What a, what a story there. But before you get to hear that, oh yeah. You got to hear another story about me, how I call Satco every day, and they seem to always have everything, Greg. I called up, I emailed Alan, I said, I think, you know, couldn't find it anywhere in Canada. Email Alan. Five minutes later, yeah, we got him. That's Satco. Yeah. Go to S-A-T-C-O dot com. And that's every day. And I had a similar experience where I was, I had a customer who was very particular about matching high pressure sodium and they wanted a cop. So I'm like, oh man, how many people have these? And I was trying to find like a 27K. I know that might be a little white. Okay, don't get all into the technical crap. But I'm like, that, that might be good enough. Uh, so I started looking up, <laughs> what about like a low, you know, low Kelvin? And who pops up? Satco. So I go to Satco and I go, <laughs> come on, you have an amber cob, an LED cob that's amber colored? And Alan's like, yeah, for Turtles Crossing or whatever, you know. <laughs> They've got it. That's just an example. Why, why waste time looking around? Go to Satco, tell them your needs, and they'll say, here. Right here. We have it in stock. (laughs) (laughs) S-A-T-C-O dot com. That's right. The Lighting Gangsters. Light thing, right thing. That's right. Of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. That's N-A-I-L-D dot org. Of which, hey, the guy you're about to hear from was the president. And so right now, hey, we're going to give you Pete Gray on the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. What do you say, Pete Gray? (laughs) Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Hey, Greg, uh, Pete Gray's on the Get a Grip on Lending podcast, man. How awesome is that? <laughs> That's awesome. I, I just had to do a calculation here, Pete, right when you jumped on, because I saw, or we saw, or the industry saw some news about you guys have been in business for 1,314,000 hours. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's a lot of hours. <laughs> 150 years, man. Yep. Exactly. How? How did, how did you do well, that? <laughs> it's, they've been doing something right, I guess, for all these years. But uh, no, right. it's it's quite an interesting thing. I mean, we were in distribution for the whole entire time, um, <clears throat> but obviously we weren't selling lighting back in 1870. So uh, 1870, we were selling farm implements, tools and supplies and stuff like that for the farming uh, industry. And then um, as basically, uh, you know, the uh, – Street lights started coming along, the gas lanterns and stuff like that. The company decided to to push into that. We started selling ladders for many, many years. Uh, in fact, we were probably uh, one of the largest ladder distributors back in the early 1900s. Um, but it's kind of funny. In addition to that, we started selling uh, seeds. So we had our own seed catalog and our own seed stock, apparently. Uh, the owner went and uh, did some research a couple years ago and found a uh, seed catalog from C.N. Robinson and Brothers from uh, 1910. So we had our own strains of corn and beans and all that kind of stuff. And then somewhere along the line, um, probably early 18 or 1900s, they uh, saw the electricity was up and coming. And that's pretty much what they you know, pushed into. And that was pretty much our longest run has been really full line electrical. Uh, and then back in the 80s, we, we branched out and uh, focused strictly on lighting. So, yeah. So you had to run. wait. You guys are the only company who had to wait till the light bulb was invented to start selling it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Uh, well, has it always been in? You guys are in Baltimore, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Has it always the company been there? was originally. Yeah, I mean, originally we were downtown. Um, a lot of the uh, distributors were actually downtown Baltimore, and then the, had the great fire in Baltimore, and that pushed a lot of those companies out. And uh, I'm not sure if our current location was our second location or certainly wasn't the original, but I don't know if there was somewhere in between downtown and where we're at now, but we're outside the the city limits, probably about, um, about two miles outside the city line. So I've been in this building since the fifties. So. Okay. And I know it's, it's family related. Is there anybody descendant of whoever CN Robinson is still around? 
No, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. When my father-in-law bought the company in 75, he bought it from, I want to say it was the great, great step-grandson of the Robinson family. So um, it's been a while. So yeah, no Robinsons in here. I thought you were going to say that Steve Robinson owned it and there was a big fight in the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we've joked about that a little bit over the years. But, uh, yeah. So we actually had a, we had, I was just going to say, we had a guy working for us named Mike Robinson at one point. He was one of our uh, drivers, warehousemen, and people thought he was like one of the owner's sons or something. I was like, no, nah, he's just, a, <laughs> just an employee. Just Robinson. <laughs> yeah. So you're – you're only three years younger than Canada. Um, <laughs> that, that's pretty awesome, dude. And like you guys, you know, like the rural electric, rural electrification act in the 1930s probably meant a lot to you guys. CN Robinson, right. Oh, when they sure. were, yeah. When they were, when they said, yeah, we're going to electrify all of America and, you know, um, you know, began doing that in the, the dawning of electric light. Um, where is, you know, what do you see in the next 150 years? <laughs> wow. That is Back the, uh, right, the $64,000 question. Um, I don't know, you know, seeds are, uh, you know, uh, obviously extremely important, but uh, I don't know if there's a lot of money to be made in seeds these days. Um, no, I think, I think our, you know, our expertise is um, for many, many years certainly has been lighting and our focus has been on lighting. I mean, we're seeing a, a shift more to more project type business, which I'm sure mm -hmm. most people are seeing out there in the industry. Um, and we've done a lot of project business for many years and we're going to continue to do that. Um, you know, your, your lamp contracts and ballast contracts and all that kind of supply stuff is it's probably going to be changing dramatically in the next hundred years. Um, but no, I, I'd say we're probably, uh, you know, trying to set things up for the next hundred years, 150 years. And hopefully uh, somebody, un unfortunately, nobody in my family or the owner's family is going to be probably doing that. So unless it comes around, you know, the next generation, but, <laughs> but I'd say, you know, we've, one of our strengths over the years has always been uh, our, our ability to shift and change with the market. We've done a lot of things and changed, you know, our, our strategy. I mean, way before my father-in-law ever bought the company, they were obviously looking for business opportunities and distribution. So I think that's kind of the core of what we do. And we'll probably continue to do that. You know, are we going to be selling, um, you know, integrated lighting systems for buildings, uh, building materials and stuff like that? Maybe, who knows? Um, you know, we are starting to kind of, yeah, you know, uh, Greg, you mentioned full circle. We're actually kind of um, starting to look at bringing in some more electrical supplies here soon, but uh, yeah. but not enough to call us an electrical distributor. We'll still be called a lighting distributor, but um, now we're just finding that there's some some items uh, that uh, we should have on the shelf that we can sell that uh, you know will help augment the products we're selling now. So, so you mentioned a little bit about the supply versus project side of business, and and that's how I break my business down too. Is I know it's X amount, X percentage of supply and X, I know of uh, projects, but I know there's crossover. You guys have generally been supply up until recently, you said, and, and in terms of that, you were state contracts for many years. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've always done projects. Our company, since, since we niched out on lighting back in the mid eighties, um, pretty much the company was like a two department type company. We did, uh, and still do um, construction projects with electrical contractors, uh, whether it's new construction, renovation, or whatever, the stuff that comes out on schedule. Uh, we do that. That's the one department. We call that our construction department. Uh, and then our end user and retrofit side of things, we kind of call our, call our MRO department. Um, and that is, uh, you know, those lamp contracts. And, yes, we have uh, been fortunate enough for probably the past four decades to win uh, the state of Maryland's lamp contract. Uh, and that has been a cornerstone for our end user business for many years. But we also do a lot of property management stuff. We do um, federal government business and, you know, as many big users of lamps and light bulbs as we can find is who we're going after. So, but uh, yeah, we're seeing kind of a trend here now that, uh, you know, for a while the MRO side and the retrofits really were taken over and probably about 70 to 75 percent of our sales uh, when the economy was struggling a little bit. Uh, but now we're seeing, you know, the construction side uh, coming back up, and that'll probably end up being our typical historical 50% of our sales. Uh, so usually we've been about 50-50 for all the years and with a little bit of, you know, uh, fluctuation depending on the economy and stuff like that. So, 
No, I haven't got into the the state contract side of the business much, but I, as I understand it, you get a list of items and you and you bid on it and you put a price on it. I assume, and I want you to confirm that those items that are on that list maybe have changed in the last few years. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting because you know historically, and in, in the state of Maryland anyway, the contract was typically just light bulbs, uh, and then way back in the '90s when the T8s were coming along. Um, they were always excluded, you know, considered excluded products by the manufacturer. So a lot of the state agencies, although they were switching to those, they hadn't really realized that they needed to put them on their bid. So there was an opportunity to make some money. Uh, and then they put, put yeah. 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 Then they put some, <laughs> then they put those items on the bid. They realized they were using more and more of those types of products. Uh, and then this last go around, um, about six years ago, when the contract came out again, uh, they decided to put LEDs on, LED lamps, uh, and that's been fantastic. That has been uh, really what the state needed, and uh, it's been helpful to us as a distributor because, you know, the contract's still relevant then. You know, you still have the old uh, traditional lamp products. you got ballast on there, and you got all the new uh, LED products. So the biggest thing is getting the users to realize that the LED products are changing, you know, every couple months, six months. And, um, you know, they got a, they're a little behind on, uh, approving new price schedules for new products. So it's like yeah. they always lag a little bit, but that's typical state government for you. But, uh, so, but no, it's, it's been a great contract. Yeah. I know linear fluorescence is, is a, a big part of it. And so I'm guessing linear tubes are, are they allowing you or are they asking you to bid everything or every, every time I've seen anything government related, it's type A only. Are they saying type B and C on your bid? Oh yeah. 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 So, so basically the contract we have is like a, a discount off a manufacturer's price schedule. So they want, and, and part of the whole, I guess, the benefit of the contract to all the state agencies and county agencies is the fact that it covers everything that the manufacturer offers. So uh, anything in the catalog, whether it's, you know, a general lamp catalog, a ballast catalog or the led catalog, everything's covered. So as soon as our manufacturer puts new lamps out there, uh, and we update the price sheet, they're on the contract. So uh, it's got that, um, you know, that, I guess, new product development stuff already built into it. So, yeah, so type A's, type B's are on there. And um, it's just been interesting, which, you know, some of the counties and state agencies have been purchasing. You know, uh, for a while it was that everybody wanted the, you know, type A's and easy, don't want to mess with all the ballasts and all that kind of stuff, changing everything. Now we're starting to see a, see a bigger shift to the type B products. So, uh you know, it's, well, we'll sell them whatever they want. And the good thing is it's on their contract. So there you go. Yeah. And in terms of, I assume you do some projects based on this too. Some of these turn into full scale retrofits and things. Orders. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So like, uh, the Washington Metro system, um, you know, the, our contract covers Maryland, DC and Virginia. And, um, the, uh, the Washington Metro system, uh, is a big client. They ride the contract and they've done some nice projects, uh, you know, based upon the contract. So it's been, it's been, it's been good. Nice. So is it my turn? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you some time, Mike. <laughs> I'm getting jealous. <laughs> so, you know, how, how are you finding the, you know, you, you have these contracts where you have to supply whatever they need. Have you had any trouble locating legacy lamps? Ah. Uh, not much. I mean, you know, more and more items are getting discontinued, obviously, every year. Um, and we do have one of the things about the contract is that since it covers all the old legacy product and the new stuff, um, it works out well because there's a lot of old schools throughout the state. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you've got old buildings that you know no one wants to renovate just yet or uh, they're slated for demolition or replacement or something like that. And they may have 500 watt PS30 and they're gym still, yeah, believe it or sure, not. Sure. But we still sell some of that stuff, and it's just amazing. But um, I got you know, I, I got Jennifer, 48 in stock if you need them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, exactly. Our, our warehouse is a is a you know museum as well in some cases. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you know the good thing is that you know we've got a lot of different users out there that use a lot of different products. So. Um, you know, we'll keep selling the stuff. I mean, there's times when we've got to tell people that no, unfortunately, that product's no longer available. Luckily, with the LEDs, we're able to kind of switch into an LED product and say, hey, you know, we can replace it with this product here that's on your contract. So it's, uh, you know, that gives us the upsell 
uh, availability um, on the contract. So that works out well. And you have um, two ex-presidents of Nailed within CN Robinson Supply. Um, and what's interesting is that both of you guys were non-owner presidents of Nailed, which is traditionally, you know, not the the typical thing, but was I think was a breath of fresh air into Nailed in a way. Um, what was your experience as president? And then what was it like to have one of your key guys <laughs> spending a lot of time <laughs> being the president of Nailed and making that sacrifice? Well, I mean, first of all, um, I wasn't the first one on the board. Um, you know, the owner of the company, Rob Mills, he was on the board um, and was planning to be president and um, had some family issues arise and, and, you know, was really taking over the business at the same time and just said, look, I, you know, frankly, really just don't have the time that I can dedicate and continue on the board. So he, he dropped off the board um, probably about a year before he was to be president and, um yeah, and said, look, you know, if you if you want to step up at some point, you're certainly welcome to. So, um, with a little pressure from the nailed board, I agreed and said, sure, I'll do it. Uh, but frankly, to me, um, yeah, that was for me that was stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, you're right. Um, you know, I, I'm not the owner, um, and I'm not heavily involved in the financials of the company. So, uh, there were some things on the nailed board that uh, I was not as uh, knowledgeable about. Um, but frankly. I really enjoyed the board, uh, the experience. I mean, as you guys know, it's a fairly long-term commitment um, and it's a working board. So it's not, or it was a working board. So, you know, you're not just an advisory, you know, an advisory position or a, an oversee position. Uh, you actually did stuff. And for me, it, it's really, um, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I mean, the camaraderie I, I, you know, built with people and the relationships I built with lots of people. Uh, I learned a lot of things. Um, you know, when I was on the board, it was a uh, time of change and there was a lot of uh, different opinions being thrown out there and ideas being considered. Who? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who? Uh, yeah. Might be a few. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone here with yeah. a red pin on. <laughs> Maybe. But, uh, but now, you know, I, I think that's, you know, that's challenging. And, um, frankly, I, it, like I said, I really learned a lot, uh, and matured as a, as a leader, um, mm. from being on the board and took a lot away from it. So I had to deal with some adversity. I had to deal with some legacy situations and some new ideas and stuff. Um, and at times it was challenging, but it was very rewarding. And like I said, I, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, certainly no hard feelings to anybody. Cause I know, you know, what's better than a bunch of passionate people, you know, sure. involved in an Great. association that uh, want to share their ideas. And uh, we had a lot of great ideas. And, and frankly, it was a time for me when you had kind of the old typical, you know, uh, the way things were done for many, many years was, you know, folks still trying to keep that in place when there was mm -hmm. a need to change things in the organization. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we've come a long way and I'm very excited about how things are going with Nail these days. Um, you know, I think the whole focus on education is, is huge and, and that's really some of the best, most value that you get out of nailed. But, uh, you know, I will say that, you know, I'm, you know, yeah, I got on the board, certainly enjoyed it. Um, you know, uh, Robin was asked to join the board and he asked me if, if I'd be okay with that. And frankly, I think he was already uh, being considered before we hired him. Um, he was with another lighting distributor who's also a nailed member. And um, I, I got to meet Robin. Yeah. Don't tell everybody else that I, you know. <laughs> okay. We won't, Robin, we won't you know. promise we'll keep it a secret. <laughs> but but um, generally, no, I, I met Robin through Nailed and, and you know, being a, working for a distributor in the same territory as we are, uh, we got to know each other very well and got to be friends. And he was looking for a change. And, you know, he came to me and said, look, I'm kind of already working the board uh, path. And, but I'd like to come work for you. And, you know, do you guys uh, have any openings? So we talked about it and, and he asked if uh, we would support him uh, on the board. And I said, well, as you know, I mean, you know, we've had one person go through and um, but, yeah, you're already on there. And I think if that's if that's part of the uh, territory, we'll, we'll certainly do that. So. So, yeah, I was proud of Robin for doing it. I think for him it was a good learning experience as well. Um, you know, I, I think any time you, you take yourself out of your comfort zone and try something different, you're going to learn something. So, um, so yeah, I'm very happy with Robin on there. And frankly, like I said, Aaron, 
you know, we've, we've always been big supporters of Nailed and will continue to be. So um, I think my father-in-law back in probably the mid 80s saw the value in Nailed and that's when they joined and uh, they were very active for many years until us younger folks came along. <laughs> So. so Robin Watts, a real special president for, uh, f- for, and by the way, just for the folks listening, I was Pete Gray's membership chairman on his board, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know, mm-hmm. 2011, maybe or something like that. Yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I stirred up some, some stuff, you know, um, but, uh, you know, Robert's a, Robin's a real special president cause he was the first one to believe in this podcast. And, um, he really, uh, you know, I was talking to him from the beginning and on his case and, you know, you know, I could be pretty annoying. Um, and, uh, but you know, he really believed in us from the beginning. And so I, I got a real soft spot for, and besides the fact that he's just a great guy on top of everything, yeah, yeah. he's just sure. a super nice guy. How are you guys looking forward in terms of strategic planning, um, considering the current environment and considering you know, what's happening? Are you hiring more people? Are you gearing up? Are you in a, uh, like, let's just see what happens mode. Are you, you, you pulling back a little bit? What, what are you, what is Ian Robinson doing right now? Well, that's a great question. Um, yeah, initially I think most people's first thought is to kind of, to, you know, tighten up, slow things down, keep an eye on things and see how things are going to, uh, unfold. Uh, we saw it as an opportunity. Um, you know, we said, look, if there's people out there that, uh, our quality that become available and we can manage it financially, um, then we should probably try to take advantage of that. Um, we saw COVID as an opportunity. Uh, so we did hire a, uh, a veteran salesman on the construction side. Um, you know, we had basically probably about 10 years, eight to 10 years ago, we kind of sp- focused more of our efforts in the uh, MRO side and the, uh, the uh, retrofit side, which paid off and was a very good idea. Um, but we kind of backed off a little bit of the construction side. You know, we didn't get out of it. Um, we just didn't invest in other, you know, um, a player. So uh, a gentleman came available who's been in the industry as long as I have. Uh, very, very knowledgeable. His focus is on con- uh, construction projects and contractors. And um, we said, look, you know, if we can swing it, let's let's bring him in and add to the team. So uh, we've done that. Uh, we've mm. actually just added, added another person to support him in the construction side. Uh, and we'll be looking for some additional folks on the, uh, the MRO side of business. I love so, it, man. So yeah. I, lo- I love to yeah. hear that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, Get it going, man. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, when you add people, I mean, you know, it's, you know, that's going to help you grow. I mean, you have to add, you have to have more feet on the street to grow. And, um, the thing is it's a risk certainly, but, um, you know, if you can manage it, uh, it's going to pay dividends in the long run. And, and it just surprises me that, you know, in our market anyway, there was, there was a good amount of good people, experienced people that, that became available. Uh, and, um, yeah, so we decided to take advantage of it and it's so far it's paying off. So, uh, I think, you know, we're also still talking about the future, trying to figure out what, uh, what we need to do and which, you know, path we want to go down. I mean, frankly, right now we're in the process of redoing our comp plan, trying to uh, put a a growth strategy together and take advantage of the opportunities Mm. we have right now. So, uh, yeah, we want to, you know, we want to continue growing this company. I mean, the 150 years is, is a huge benchmark, obviously. And, and, um, you know, um, Hey, I don't want to be the one that the company fails on. I was going to say, I I was going to say, that's a lot of pressure, man. I I was going to say, you know, I, I, my dad, 44 years in lighting or whatever. And I, you know, it's like he, he, my dad's, you know, he works every day still he's in his seventies, but he works every day. But you know, he looks at me, he's like, you, you got to keep it going, boy. You got to keep it going for the kids <laughs> right. and bring other people in here and get it. Go- There's pressure with that. Um, sure. now we don't lose sleep over it. You know, we know that, you know, uh, you got to work hard every day in that. But you know what? I was just going to ask you, you've been a president of Nailed. Greg's been a president of Nailed. I'd hate to be the president of Nailed right now. Like, I don't envy Matt mm-hmm. at all, actually. <laughs> yeah, Tough I mean, it's, be, it's, a, it's a whole... Yeah, it is. There's a lot of things to think about. And, you know, I mean, for Nailed, one of the biggest, you know, things is is the networking and getting people together at the conference and all that and, you know, have that kind of put on hold. And, I mean... I, don't get me wrong. I thought the virtual things were fantastic this year. I enjoyed that. Um, but there's nothing like getting together with a bunch of people, sure. you know, and, and vendors and, and 
fellow distributors alike and, and sharing, you know, conversation over dinner and cocktails and, and some social events. So uh, I do miss that. And I think, uh, I think our industry is missing that. So uh, I think we what all would you do to get back to if you're the president. Stuff. So you're the president. So Matt, Matt's actually, um, you know, this is going to air after the next board meeting when we're going to have the discussion about it, but you know, what, as an, as a past president, and one of the things about nailed is that the past presidents are actually quite important to nailed. And a lot of people don't know that there's a past president's council and a meeting at the convention every year where the past presidents get together and they, they grill the shit out of the current president for what he's up to and what he's doing. And so being a past president of nailed is, um, something that's very important to nailed. Uh, what, what advice would you give to Matt right now and to the board? Do you think they should set a date and begin preparations, um, you know, and, and just move forward, pick a state where there's the least amount of restrictions or whatever, and just get it done? Or would you go into a holding pattern? It's a tough choice. It is a tough choice. Um, you know, it, it, that's probably the toughest question to answer because you really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I just saw that Light Fair has decided to postpone until October of next year, uh, which I think is a good idea because I think we're still going to be kind of in the throes of it in the spring. Um, I would worry that that the spring would be too soon to hold a conference, an in-person conference. Um, so I would, if I were president, I would try to suggest trying to change it to the fall. The only problem you run into then is everybody wants to do that. And I know as, as, you know, being on the board of nailed uh, for many years, one of the most difficult things is trying to find the right date to schedule the conference. You know, you've got so many conflicting things and then, you know, it seems like over the years, there's more and more lighting shows popping up and more and more led events and all that. And, and then, you know, and we've seen it before where you then end up, you know, bumping into another conference or something and you don't get quite the turnout you would hope mm -hmm. for. So, um, you know, I do like the virtual thing. I mean, but I think people are kind of getting tired of some of the virtual stuff. Um, but that was effective. Uh, I also did some of the IES thing and, and some NAED stuff uh, virtually this year. And they were very helpful. But like I said, you do miss that that in-person connection and all that networking. Um, so, if you know, if I was president of NAILD right now, I'd say let's kind of take a look at maybe postponing the actual in-person. But with the goal of having an in-person event sometime in 2021. So. All right. Hey, uh, one thing I wanted to ask, I looked on, on your website. <clears throat> said you had now have texting abilities. What does that mean? Yeah, so there's um, there's a service out there. I think it's called ProKeep uh, that um, basically they they interface with your computer system and phone system so that your customers can text you on your main line. So basically, it's 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 a way to get quick orders and quick responses from your customers directly to certain personnel that you deem you know. You know, like your customer service people. So like our counter guy will get, uh, you know, he'll get uh, contact from text. So the contractor may text him, hey, I'm coming in, need 10 two by four, you know, troppers or something. Um, it's just another way that we can uh, make it easy for the customers to do business with us. Um, they've added uh, the ability to add pictures and stuff like that as well. So, and we get that a lot anyway, you know, our customers will send us pictures of drivers. I'm sure you guys do too. Lenses, pictures, polls, hey, we need this kind of thing. Um, but this is just more of a, a formal way that they can call our regular number and it actually you know, routes through the phone system, uh, which we now have uh, VUIP on our phone system, but routes through that directly to each uh, customer services person's desk and they can handle it right then and there. And they can text back, you know, both both ways. Also gives our salespeople the ability to text in things as well. So they want to just a quick, hey, enter an order for Joe Blow at, you know, hundred of these or whatever, uh, they can do that quickly. So I think these days it's all about communication and making it easy for your customers to do business with you. Right. So, yeah. And yeah so what did you call that? Pro keep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The manufacturer or the, the company. So, so should I be checking Greg's website in three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> to, to see, I'm uh, telling you, I'm doing more and more. I'm going to start right sending now. you. I'm going to start sending you pictures over that, buddy. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to. I used to think that you, get, you should stay away from it, but I find more more people like want it now. Yeah, it's and true. it's more yeah. more of an effective way of communicating. Sometimes, hundred like percent. You call, you leave a message, you email, you do that, or you just text them quick. And if they want to yeah. talk, they'll call you right back. That's great. Let's do it. Exactly. So I'm with you, yeah. Peter. I, I mean, like that a, move. So thing. Yeah, we. It's funny, y'all. You know. 
those of us who've been in the industry for a number of years are always like, how the phone's ringing, how the phone's ringing. Well, the phones aren't ringing much anymore. Of course not, because you're getting orders through email and other ways, right? So texting is just another way to get uh, orders and, and inquiries. So it works out nice. Now, yeah, are, are you still active with, you were at one point on the board of the NCQLP that does the LC test. Are you still with them? Correct. No, no, I um, dropped off the board there. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a uh, it was a very different board than Nailed. Obviously, it was uh, more of that advisory uh, oversight board um, approvals and things like that. And um, you know, the real work at NCO, NCQLP is done by the test committees and and things like that. Um, so the board duties at the NCQLP were fairly light, but very interesting. And and I did like being involved in it. Um, you know, we had been getting ready to start making some changes, opening new branches and stuff here. So uh, I was uh, encouraged to try to limit my extracurricular uh, duties. <laughs> and, and, and just, yeah, so so NCQLP kind of had to go by the wayside. Uh, unfortunately, I, they asked me to be president. I was looking forward to being president uh, right when that all kind of happened. So, but that's okay. I called Sid up and asked him and he stepped up. So, <laughs> yeah. But it, it hey, Sid, Sid's and, the boss, buddy. Sid's the boss. He's the man. Sid's yep. the boss. Exactly. <laughs> but um, no, I, so, you know, I, I, yeah. I was just because I really believe in NCQLP and the whole LC yeah, process. Too. I think that's that's very important uh, to our industry. And, and like I said, I got you know Robin's doing it now. I'm very excited for him, and he just needs to pass. So <laughs> uh, yeah. that's all good. I you know I, I'd said you know we had two LCs in our company um, a number of years ago, and the one gentleman was on the construction side, and then when he left, we dropped back to just having me here. So I said I really wanted to see more of my sales team become LCs or at least LS ones and twos and LSCs mm -hmm. and so forth. So, um, wait till so you see evolve, a, man. And wait till you see LS evolve, man. That's going to be super powerful. Uh, we, I'm so excited about that. Um, my, I've been beta testing it here with my people and okay. we just, we just finished the UVC module. Oh, oh man. Nice. Oh dude. Okay. Awesome. I'm Good. telling you, it's going to be incredible, man. I'm, I, you know, right. I, I just, and all nailed members get it free. So awesome. yeah, as many employees as you want to put through it, um, it's there for you guys. It, it's so, it's not me and Greg, it's all manner of different instructors. It's going to be so, so good. So okay. yeah. Awesome. I'm really excited. About it. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. And just quick we will, hitters we will on that. So yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And so uh, on the LC, are you, uh, how are you guys preparing for that when you have somebody go through it? Cause it's something I've thought about here too. If I should have, I, right now I am the only one at my company, but, should we have more than one? Is it, you know, I don't know that the designation maybe is it needed as much. The only time I can ever use it is one city requires an LC to sign a layout. Uh, so I can do that now, but the knowledge is what, what it's really about. Right. Exactly. It's, it's, I mean, I, you know, I've never been asked to appear in court and represent <laughs> any, you know, the lighting industry in court or anything like that. But I have, I have had to write some letters for some customers, um, uh, where they need an LC on the project. There was one at NIH that uh, one of our contractors was doing, and it required an LC to review everything and sign off. So I was able to do that and provide that. Uh, but yeah, I think more so, you know, for the education. You know, the whole thing with the LC is is it just broadens your knowledge base so much. It's it's amazing. And I think, you know, talking to Robin, and he's realizing that now. He's like, oh, my word, you know, I thought I knew lighting. I've been doing it for, you know, eight, ten years. Until you start going studying for the LC, it's a whole different ballgame. So, um, and it has changed obviously since you know I took it back in 2001. Um, but um, but now I think it's important. And and for me and for our company, it's really being able to say that you know we're trained experts. This is what we do. Um, and it's a commitment to the industry. It's a commitment to your career. Uh, and I think it's important because let's face it, there's a lot of a lot of bad lighting applications out there that you run into. And mm -hmm. now with LED, I mean, any pretty much anybody can get LED product these days, right? You could, you know, you and I could run over to China and start to set up our own company if we wanted to. Um, and there's all kinds of people that are selling LED lighting that really don't really know much about lighting. So um, I think, um, you know, our customers understand that, you know, we're dedicated to the industry and we're, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, want to be knowledgeable and, and uh, you know, be able to be counted on. So, it is a benefit to our customers as well. So, yeah, I'd like yes. to have all my sales and be LCs, frankly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a process for sure, but it, it's definitely worth it in the long run. Um, 
we started before we hit record, and I, I always question Mike and his outfits, but this might relate to the podcast. It might not. What the hell is that red thing on your on your shirt there? <laughs> That's a poppy, my man. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely sing and fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. We loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Poppies grow in Flanders fields. There you go, bud. So that's why we wear them, brother. John McRae, 1917, brother, wrote that yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I think he was a lieutenant. You guys would say lieutenant. He was a lieutenant in the Canadian Armed Forces in Flanders, and and uh, yeah, man, a lot of a lot of uh, young men uh, gave their lives for safety. No freedom. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Did I say that? <laughs> so they gave their lives for freedom. And, you know, we wear this in Canada from maybe about the end of October. Certainly after Halloween, there's certainly a stigma in not wearing one. And so all Canadians should be wearing a poppy today, especially November 11th when this is being recorded. Is it Veterans Day today in the States? It is as well. So there's no symbol that you wear, though, on that day? No, no I think they were talking about like a V or something like that for the NFL players. Right, they're asking them everybody to put a V on their hand or something for, you know, someone with a veteran they might know as well. Mm. So. so yeah, that's why we wear them. Um, to you know, to to celebrate the uh, not to celebrate but to commemorate is the right word I was looking for there. But you know, Pete, I wanted to ask you. I think it's probably time we've been we've been going for thirty five minutes here though. But just back to that education piece and talking about um, developing your skills, and for the people listening to this. I, you know, I'm not an LC. Um, I'm a university dropout. I don't like tests. I don't like studying. I, I just, I, I only can follow something I'm interested in. It's a certain, it's a personality. I've learned to accept it about myself. I used to be very depressed about it because I couldn't do anything I wasn't interested in. Like I could not force myself to do something that did not interest me. If it did not interest me, I just would not do it. And it was very difficult. And I used to, you know, have self-esteem issues about it. I'm not kidding you, man. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. I'm going to get a girl. No, but honestly, in all honesty though, I think industry accreditation is so underrated for young people. Like if you're listening to this, an LC is is an extremely valuable certification. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's way more valuable than a, um, a a bachelor of arts uh, in English. And I hate to say that, all you teachers out there that teach English, I love you guys. You guys are the best, you know, but you have to be a teacher of some kind if you study that. Other than that, there's not really, it's not going to really afford you a lot of job options. But an LC, man, you walk in Atlas Lighting, say, hey, I, I got, a, you know, I'm this guy, this guy, and, you know, I'm, I got an LC. That's, that you just upped your ante big time. And so even LS1, LS2, these paths towards LS controls with Evolve, these paths towards the LC are valuable as well. How would, can you speak to, you know, young people listening to this, you know, you have this, you know, 30 under 30 and all these things going on in the industry. Can you speak to a little bit about the the monetary value of these industry accreditations at, at just specifically with CN Robinson? Oh yeah. Well, certainly. I mean, you know, lighting has become an, even more of a technical industry than it ever was. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a technical industry, uh, but, you know, prior to LEDs, you know, it's technical enough. Now you've got LED products, you've got the controllability of all those products. Um, it's a much more technical industry than it's ever been. And I, I find myself saying that to, you know, people I'm interviewing and so forth. Um, and it is a one of those in, industries that once you get in, your knowledge is value and that gives you value as a person. Um, it's almost, you know, you're a practitioner of lighting and, um, you know, there's a lot more to it than most people think. It could get, can be very scientific. Uh, it can be, you know, financially uh, focused with, with paybacks and ROIs and things like that. So it covers a lot of ground. Um, but I'd say that to the young people out there, uh, you know, college 
is great. College is wonderful. And, sure. and you know, there's this big push for many, many years. Oh, you got to have a college degree. You got to have a college degree. You got to have a college degree. Well, I can tell you a bunch of my folks don't have college degrees, uh, but they're studying lighting. And um, there's some folks that I've got that, uh, you know, will take the time and energy to focus on their career and the, you know, the specific uh, path they've chosen uh, to go down and, you know, want to better themselves and be an asset to their customers and their company. Uh, I think, you know, it's any industry, whether it's plumbing, whether it's electrical, lighting, um, you know, industrial uh, automation, things like that. I think, you know, to really, you know, put yourself deep into the technology and deep into the industry, if you want to, you know, be effective, that's what you got to do these days. I mean, college education these days gives you, you know, most of the background, most of the the uh, general knowledge you need, but if you really want to get specific and be effective and valuable to an industry, you really got to get deep in that industry. And those industry certifications uh, are what supports that and extremely important. And, and I think, you know, with lighting, as we all know, it's evolved. If you just look at how lighting has evolved over the past hundred some years, uh, it's going to continue. We know it is. They're already talking about, you know, quantum dots and all <laughs> kinds of other things. Woo! There, so, yeah. Sauce uh, it up. <laughs> sauce it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we're going to get to the point where, where lighting is is autonomous. It does its own thing. It's, no one has to turn anything on. No one has to think about lighting. It's all mm. it's all handled automatically, um, and you're given the lighting you need for the task. You're you know it's all through automation, and so forth. So I I think. Hang on, I want to comment on that. To just what you just said right there, I think that's exactly what people who are thinking about health effects and controls need to hear. Like every lighting distributor knows that people don't want to download a program on their phone and manage an app or like be worried about like configuring things over. Oh, yeah. Oh, they'll get an. Uh, yeah. Oh, someone just walked into the washroom at my office. I have an alert. Right. I don't think people really want to go that deep. I think I think you're absolutely right, Pete. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. I think and I, when the health effects and the addressability and all that sort of stuff comes to pass. It's going to be in the manner in which you just described it. One more question for you, Pete. Sure. 150 years, big party or what, bud? You going to have all well, nailed down to see on Robinson Supply and wear masks <laughs> and have a big keg? And what do you? I think we've well, done that we before had... with crab, didn't we? In God, Baltimore, God. maybe, maybe yeah, a bag yeah, thrown right. in the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I that's right. Yeah. Yep, Nick's fish house. Yep. Now, um, we we were planning some big stuff, and unfortunately, it all kind of got sidelined because sure. of COVID. But uh, sure. But yeah, we're still trying to see. In fact, we're we're even now just trying to figure out what's going to happen for our holiday party, our own company holiday party this year. Um, but now we might end up end up having the big celebrations next year if things ease up. So um, we've done some small stuff, but not nothing major, you know. And you know, we were talking about a big, huge crab feast, if you will, with our mm -hmm. customers and stuff like that. But uh, but with COVID, we had to kind of put that on hold. So unfortunately, but it gives us something to look forward to next year. You know, so hopefully. But yeah, Pete, a couple kegs of beer and a couple bushels of crabs. I'm all down ooh, for that. So, Peter Gray. Hey, I'm glad we finally snagged you, man. It's been a couple of years. Yeah, We've been nice. talking about getting you on the show. So I thanks know. for being a guest. Well, thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate it. It's always good talking to you. All the best. Come on, bro. This is about the gangster style. SATCEO.com, Greg. Going gangster. Gangsters, they have what you need when you need it. And that's that call <laughs> all the time. Whatever for you need, sure. man, they've got it. Yeah, they can get it. Pretty much. Whether that's legacy technology, price. fixtures, lamps, weird GUZ 24 XQY, they got it, man. You go to SATCO.com. They do the light thing, they do the right thing, but they're still gangsters. And of course, uh, we can't forget about. The association they belong to, Greg, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, longtime vendor member, meets Pete Gray. Sponsoring Talk Pete Gray time. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Pete Gray's company, we said it in the podcast, has been in business for over a million hours. <sighs> Nobody else can even say that, really. That's no. crazy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A million hours. Well, you know, they were in lighting before the, when they, it was only candles and whale seal, whale oil and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. So, they, like, lighting was par deux for CN Robinson. So, it was so good to hear from you, Pete. 
Miss you, buddy, and all my buddies at Nailed. And all you listeners out there, come on, man. Join the crew. National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. The rest of you colleagues that aren't in yet, and we still hate you, but you can still listen to the podcast whenever you want. (laughs) (laughs) Written on the rectory wall, there's a sign there for all. You are lost, Lord is there to find you.